Father, we thank you tonight that the blood does work. Hallelujah. The blood of the lamb. Thank you, Jesus. We have overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. And we thank you and we praise you and we bless that name. The name of Jesus, the mighty name. And we thank you and we pray tonight and we ask you, dear Father, for revelation and insight into the power, the greatness of the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we pray in that name. And I'm asking you that not one person in the sound of my voice, not one, not here, not online, not anywhere in the world, will see the end of this service without having experienced the mighty power of that name. And be totally delivered set free spirit, soul, and body. Set free financially. Set free in the social part of this world. Families set free by the name and by the blood. And oh my, we give you praise and we honor you. And we're, we're, we're quick. Oh Lord, we're, we're quick to ascribe all of the glory, all of the praise for everything that's said, everything that's done, everything that's accomplished to that name. The, mar the, oh, the marvelous, wonderful, magnificent name of Jesus. And we praise you tonight. And we do thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Open your Bibles with me again this evening. To the 16th chapter of Mark's gospel. Last night we began talking about the authority of the name of Jesus. This meeting, yesterday afternoon, uh, yes, yesterday afternoon as I was praying and, and uh, seeking the Lord and listening concerning this meeting, and I asked him, I said, Lord, what, uh, what, what is the purpose of this meeting? Too many times we go into a meeting without, without knowing his purpose and just kind of make up our own minds. Well, we're going to be doing this and this and this. No. Is it a praise meeting? If it is, let's praise all night. Is it a prayer meeting? You don't go to a prayer meeting and preach all night. You go to a prayer meeting to pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, and I was inquiring of the Lord about this. He said, this is a faith in the name of Jesus breakthrough meeting. A breakthrough of revelation but see, that's where faith, that, that, that's, that's when faith comes. Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, and then when re revelation breaks through in that word, it may be something you've heard and read over and over and over again. It may be the same message that you've been hearing over and over again, but suddenly something in that message clicks. Boy, your faith goes to another level when, when that happens. Amen. Well, that's happening 
It happened last night and it'll happen again tonight, praise God, concerning the power and authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now notice that the name of Jesus and supernatural power in that name belongs to every believer. He said in the 15th verse, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, what is it about that you don't understand? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty plain, isn't it? And these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, see, an apostle is a believer first. A prophet is a believer first. An evangelist is a believer first. A pastor and a teacher is a believer first. These signs follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. I, li I like to read it each time. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall take up serpents. In my name, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm going to go back to it again. That is a blood heaven backed statement. That is not a promise. That's a fact. It's established forever. Amen. So when you lay hands on the sick, it did not say, you notice, it did not say they shall pray for the sick. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't have to. Amen. You lay hands on the sick. Expect them to recover. Expect them to recover. Amen. This thing ought to get so real to you. I, I mean, you, you, you just, you just, well, I mean, you used to expect it to come to pass. Back in the early years of this ministry, the Lord had me for, uh, for a, a, a long time and, and, and just take my Bible. I, ha I have never received from the Lord a special anointing to lay hands on the sick. Now, Brother Hagin did, but I haven't. Now, there are other things in my life and so forth. I won't go into all that, but that's special anointing right there. What more you need? It's wonderful special anointing and manifestations. But hey, come on. This is the guidebook. And there's been times that I said, okay, Lord, here's what you said. These signs will follow them that believe. I'm a believer. Are you a believer? Yes, I am, Brother Colton. In my name, they'll cast out devils. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. They shall speak with new tongues. And I said, I'm going to do that in just a moment. And Thank God we have, uh, we have authority in the name of Jesus over serpents and, and, and deadly things. And, and it says right here, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I said, Lord Jesus, there's the sick and here's the hands. In the name of Jesus be healed. And I've had people just, just instantly just get up and walk off. And I'm embarrassed to say <laughs> that I got a little sophisticated 
and got away from the simplicity of that and missed God. It's time to just go back to the Bible and just hold it there in your hand and just read that one, two, three, then do one, two, three, wham, get up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we, uh, I was preaching. How many of you uh, uh, remember uh, Brother Hilton Sutton and his ministry? Of course, he's in heaven now. And oh my, just, oh, such a close, close, close friend uh, of, of glory and mine and, and he and his family. Anyway, I was preaching down in Beaumont, Texas in his dad's church, Dad Sutton. And uh, whoa, I'm telling you, Dad Sutton was an old timer now. I mean, he, my, he, he's, he invited me to come preach in his church. I, I just had a three week meeting in Hilton's church. And so he was waiting on me when they closed that meeting. He said, I want you to come to me. And so he gave me a date, which was um, a few weeks away. Well, I got down there and the flu epidemic had hit. As that, it's the f- first time I remember he- ever hearing anything about the Hong Kong flu. But man, I, and any of you that remember, particularly back there then when that first hit, uh, it was, it was very, very dramatic. And people, no, no, let me take it back. It's the second time. Anyway, it don't matter. He said, oh, Brother Copeland, he said, I, I've, I've got so many people out with the flu. He said, I, I, I don't, and he was, he was really concerned about the finances and all that. He said, Brother Kenneth, he said, I couldn't guarantee you $50 if you stayed a month. And I said, uh, Brother Sutton, uh, I never asked you to. So anyway, he said, well, remind me, Lord. Uh, yeah. I said, okay, uh, let's let, get your bottle of oil and, and let's, go, let's, let's go attack the flu. And we did. And we're, we're doing this and anointing them with oil. In fact, let me show you something. Hold your place there and turn over to the book of James. Chapter five. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Now here's a place where he says, pray. Pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. I I don't hear any maybe in there, do you? Remember, that's a blood covenant. Shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Okay. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Uh, anybody got a, an idea or maybe an example of praying the prayer of faith in this incident? How are you going to pray that? Well, yeah, he said in the name of Jesus. Prayer of faith. Look at it again. And the prayer of faith, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith. Faith in the name. 
name. Faith in that name. That's the prayer of faith in the name. You're not just praying in the name. You are having, you are praying the prayer of faith in the name. You see what I'm saying here? Glory be to God. So you just, ah, hallelujah. You get stirred up over that name. And if someone calls you and asks you to come over and anoint them with oil and pray, don't just jump, just grab, just jump, run over there. Unless they're dying. But even at that, go through your name of Jesus scriptures that every, every knee will bow and every name confess. Every name, every name, every name, bow its knee to that name. Cancer's a name. It has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> oh, we're, we're going over there in a little bit. But I, I wanted you to see that. Refresh yourself in the power of that name. And, th and think about it. The spirit of the living God is dwelling in me and dwelling on me. And that name, that name is my name. We've been named after him, both in heaven and earth, all the whole family, but it's a family name. This is the family name, glory be to God forever. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you stirred up about it? I sure am. Get, get yourself stirred up about that name and then just go attack that disease with that name. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a mighty weapon in the hand of a born again, Holy Ghost, baptized, tongue talking, healing, believing Christian. Thank you, Jesus. Now then, let's go to the book of Acts once again. And we will look here in the third chapter. Peter and John going into the temple, the time of prayer. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Peter fastening eyes upon him with John said, look upon us, look on us. He gave heed unto them expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I have it. The name of Jesus, all of the scriptural evidence reveal that the power and the mighty authority invested in that name came after Jesus was raised from the dead. Amen. We needed it. He didn't need it. He didn't get that authority for himself. You remember he said, all authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. What came next? Therefore do what? Go do what? In my name! All authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and earth. You go in my name. And then he left. Left it with us. Glory to God. That's the reason he said in the 18th chapter of Matthew, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. It can't work the other way around. He can't bind in heaven till we bind on earth. The authority has been given to earth. It started out in the earth and Adam dumped it. 
God created all of this and gave it unto mankind, gave it to men. And the first guy blew it. Amen. But Jesus got it back and then some. Hallelujah. He's the second and the last Adam. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. If, you, if, if that don't, if I, I'll tell you what, if that, if that don't make you happy, I'll tell you, you got a problem, brother. Mm, mm, mm. Now notice, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Took him by the right hand, lifted him up. Now he expected him to get up. You notice he hadn't prayed for him. He made a demand. He made a demand on that name. Now quickly, go with me to the book of John, 14th chapter. And look at this. Verse 12, verily, I, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Now in the 16th chapter, John 23rd verse, he said, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. But here he said, see, that word ask means to ask. It also is translated demand or require. So he said, whatever you demand in my name, I'll do it. I'll back it. That's what happened right there. Yeah. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. The name can do anything the man can. The man can't do anything more than his name. You got a good name? You got a bad name. A bad name, the guy can't do any more than his bad name unless some way it gets changed. But the name, the power's in the name. But of course, all of the power of heaven is behind that name. Oh, that's where we're going with this tonight. Whew. And I'm, I'm kind of wanting to jump the traces here, but I, I still have to see the, I want you to see this. He's guaranteeing them while he's still on the earth. They don't understand what he's talking about yet. They didn't understand it until after he had already uh, gone. And then, of course, once they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost and power, what did they do? They didn't have any great revelation. They didn't know but one sermon. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me. That's, all, that's what, and they just started preaching that. That's what they were preaching while he was still here. You, <laughs> you think they're going to be out preaching something else while he's up on the mountain of Transfigure? No, they're preaching Jesus is anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Now that, that same anointing's on us. We're supposed to be doing the same thing. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. It was a long time before, it, before they began to preach anything but that. They preached Christ. Well, being English readers of a Greek word, we didn't get it. I wish they'd have translated it, but I, you know, I can't help it now. What, what am I, four or 500 years later, something like that, <laughs> praise God. But, but this, this is what was going on. They, but they had a revelation of the name. Ooh. And I mean, when they walked through there and the spirit of God came on those two men 
and they saw that man. They, they'd seen him lying there. They had given him alms before. They'd gone in there. I mean, he was laid there daily. They followed Jesus in and out of that temple again and again and again and again and again. He, they were with him every time he went in there. Amen. Jesus walked right by the guy and he stayed crippled the whole time in Jesus' ministry. Oh, Brother Copeland, wonder why Jesus didn't heal him. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say, and I only do what I see my father do. The father didn't say anything to him about healing him, so he didn't do it. Amen. Well, you see, Brother Copeland, he was waiting until they could get, come on, get off of it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name. Say it, the name, name. which is above every name name. that is named named. is my name. name. Think about it now. What happened to that name? Jesus had no need of that name once he got to heaven. He had no need for it. We had need for it. No other name under heaven given unto men. You ought to shout it right there. (laughs) Given unto men. Why? A weapon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only, not, not only that weapon, but divine connection between heaven and earth because we've been raised up to sit with him in heavenly places in that place of authority on the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Whew. Glory be to God. Oh Lord, where was I? <laughs> Whew. Now then, we read also, let, let's go back over here now to the, the, the book of Acts once again that, in that uh, third chapter. There's something else here we must see before we, before we go on. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, let's look at the 16th verse. Peter began to preach. And he said in verse 16, His name through faith in his name. Faith in the name. Through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Glory to God. Faith in the name. We read in the 18th chapter of Proverbs, the 10th verse, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. One translation said, it is a strong, high tower and the righteous run into it and are lifted above into safety. Inside the name. We have authority, the authority of the believer is so, well, like I said, Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and earth. Therefore you go, you take my name. In other words, you take that authority. That authority has been invested into the body of Christ. Look, Look at the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, please.
This, this will help you get a, an, a, an insight to that tower. Jesus said in the 17th chapter of John, if you recall, we, we read that last night, he was praying at the Last Supper and he said, I have kept them in your name. Now there's a, a, a mental play on words there. If you don't ever think about that, it's, it's well, in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. Now that, that represents, I am speaking in someone else's name But that's not what he said. That's not what Proverbs 10 said, or 18.10 said. He said, you can go in it. I kept them in that name. I kept them in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can be surrounded by it because it's the name above every name. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we'll get there. Some of you are still looking at me like a <laughs> dog in a new pan, but I, you know, you, you'll get it. Ephesians chapter one. In the uh, 16th verse, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. All of you partners will notice this is on the body of me, a partner letter. Every time, every time you get a letter that's right there on the bottom of it, because this is, a, this is one of the, of the prayers that are prayed for you in this ministry. I, sneeze, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness? Exceeding greatness. Say exceeding greatness. Exceeding. Say it again. Say it again. One more time. Exceeding what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward or towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Look, far above high tower. Huh? (laughs) Hallelujah. Far above all principality, far above all power, far above all might, far above all dominion. And, and Every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And you've been named after that name. (laughs) Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jump right down to the sixth verse, chapter two, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're in the name. And the name is in us. The devil looks at you and he just says the name of Jesus right across across your forehead. Hallelujah. Say, Brother Copeland, you can't prove that from the word. Well, you can't prove it in neither. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go back up there. And has put all things You could say, and has put all names under his feet 
and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. The fullness, we're the fullness of him. That's the reason nothing gets done in the earth without you and me. Somebody's got to pray. Some, somebody has to use that authority. Somebody has to use that name. Somebody's got to believe God around here. Somebody needs to be taking dominion. Amen. Hallelujah. And put it all under his feet and gave him to be the head. He's the head. Where are the feet? Your feet's not in your head. (laughs) Did you ever stop to think about what the Word of God said about the the government's being on his shoulder? Not on his head, on his shoulders. We have authority over governments. We just haven't been using it. Just let the devil run roughshod and drive a wedge of, 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 of meanness between the parties of this nation. And we just sit down and gripe and gram, you know, and go on and, and get mad at one party or the other and then instead of taking authority. Well, I've changed my way of doing. Amen. Principalities powers, rulers of the darkness. Well, hey, in that, in, in that Ephesians chapter six, that's Satan's operation from the lowest to the highest. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirit in the heavenlies. Rulers, rulers of the darkness. Well, hey, <laughs> Colossians chapter one says, giving God thanks and praising God who has delivered us from the power or the authority of darkness. They don't have any power to rule you. They don't have any power to rule me. They don't have any power to rule our government unless we give it to them. And Christian people have gotten to so fussy they don't vote anymore. Well, I don't like either one of them. I'm not going to vote for either one of them. Well, shut up and don't be griping about the government then. Because you don't have any gripe coming. And I'm not smiling when I say it. I'm fed up with it. I'm very passionate about this country. Amen. Oh, I thank God for her. This is one nation under God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I believe I will. (laughs) Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm very passionate about it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. (laughs) Glory to God. And even though we've been delivered from the authority of darkness, we live in a world dominated by the devil. He's called the God of this world. Well, of course, he's not our God. I refuse. I I absolutely refuse. I, I am not going to allow a spirit of darkness to rule me. I'm not going to allow him to rule my household. No, no. Just, I mean, just a, just a few weeks ago, oh, I got stirred up. The Lord just, oh, I, did, I just got stirred up and mad in the name of Jesus. And I, 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 just went, I just went to ripping, praise God, just ripping. I just started ripping into Satan with everything. You're not coming in my house. You're not coming here. God has given me under him 
the responsibility of my house. And you're not coming here. No, sir. Now, men, it's time for you to get your righteous indignation stirred up and walk around that house and I mean you lay a bloodline around that place and you walk through that house and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you take authority over every TV demon, you take authority over everything in that house that don't belong there and in the name of Jesus, you cast him out. And mama, you follow right in behind him and say, yes, amen, bless God, bless God. Amen. Boy, I could just get stirred up and just preach a little while, I guess. The greatness of his name. Where did it come from? Look with me first in the book of Hebrews chapter one. Oh, this is just so stirring when you see it. God who at sundry times and in different manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Now that right there ought to really shake you up because we're joint heirs with him. That means we have inherited all things right along with him. We own this planet. (laughs) Glory to God. By whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the experience Express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now let me read on because this is, this is necessary for you to grasp that statement. For under which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, let all the angels of God worship him. When was Jesus born of the Father? The scripture says, He was manifested in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. He was not born of the father in Bethlehem. He was born of a mother in Bethlehem. (laughs) He'd been with the father always. But at the cross, he was separated from him. And he experienced terrible spiritual death. The Bible is a spiritual book and it seldom talks about natural death. When it does, it identifies it. It talks about people being dead in their sins. Dead. Well, you're not physically dead. I mean, you're still walking around, but you're a dead man or a dead woman. Why? You're disconnected from God. Your spirit's dead. 
It's connected to death. It's connected to Satan. If it isn't connected to Jesus, there's no in between. (laughs) Jesus called the most religious people of the day, you're of your father, the devil. And they were. Amen. So what happened? He again, when he bringeth in the firstborn into the world, born. Again, Jesus, the first man to ever be born again from sin to righteousness. Now, Jesus never sinned. And don't you go out and lie on me and say, I said Jesus sinned. Don't you dare do something like that. He never sinned. Of course he did not. He was made to be sin. He was made to be sin. He became obedient to death. That's awesome. What does that mean? He became obedient to death. He couldn't die. There was no death in him. So what did he do? He had to receive death by faith. He had to receive the curse by faith or it couldn't touch him. Amen. He became obedient to it. He died, separated from God. You have to let him die. You, 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 if you don't let him die, die, you have no concept of your life. Amen. And then he went to hell. Three terrible days and nights. In a deeper place of hell than any man before or any man after. See, hell, hell wasn't created for men. men no, no man was ever supposed to go there. Now, let me give you some concept of how terrible it is and and why you do not want to be going there. Um, Heaven is a, (laughs) whoa, that's beyond what you can ask or think, right? Who created heaven? God. Amen. That's the reason it's so marvelous. Do you know God's the one who created hell? And as marvelous as heaven is, that's how much hell hell is but it was not created for men. It was created for the devil and his angels. Yeah, right. <coughs> oh, I wish we had time to spend more time in that tonight, but I just don't. But Jesus went into that horrible place and he was made a curse for us. He bore all sin. He bore all sickness. He bore all the curse, all disease, all poverty, all of it, all of it. Praise God. It started before he ever came down off of that cross. And the scripture says his visage, his form was so marred, he no longer resembled a human being. That began before he ever came down from that cross. Now, let me share another bit of very important information for you. When he cried, why hast thou forsaken me? And it is finished. Now people have had, and and not wrongly, don't misunderstand me, I'm not criticizing. But what was finished, what, you know, and, and so forth and so on. And that's good. But what most people don't realize He locked on 
to the 22nd Psalm, which begins and ends with, why hast thou forsaken me? And it is finished. He locked onto that Psalm and he put it in his mouth and he put it in his heart and he locked into it and he didn't turn loose of it. And he praised God through that whole thing. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. And in that horrible place, what we just read in the first chapter of the book of Hebrews, suddenly God said, that's enough. It's settled. It's satisfied. And while all the demons of hell were doing their best to annihilate him, it took for him to suffer He got born again. <laughs> Same new birth you and I have. Not one, not one second's difference. He's born from above, we're born from above. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And it was the word of God that lives and abideth forever that got him out of that pit. Amen. Come on. One. Say one. One. One born again man. Not God, man. One born again man defeated all of hell by himself. By himself he purged our sin. Oh, that'll make your blood hot. That'll make you mad at the devil and make you so fall in love with Jesus so you can't understand it. Hallelujah. Same new birth you have. Same Holy Ghost you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn back to the book of Revelation. The book where you don't ever read much. First chapter. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and death. I have the keys of hell and death. How'd he get them? He took them away from him. <laughs> Whoa, I told you I was about to jump the tracks and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm way, way ahead of myself. Well, I'll just go on over there now. But you see, he inherited that name, the name of God. God's name is not God. That's not his name. That came out of German theology, God. And we just got to what we just call him God all the time. That's not his name. <laughs> what, Brother Coleman? Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on, she said. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. He is Jehovah Roha. He is my shepherd. Jehovah Jireh. He sees and provides. He's Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. He's Jehovah Sidskanu, our righteousness. He's Jehovah Shalom, our peace. This is his name. Jehovah Shama, he is present. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Jehovah Nisi, he's my canopy, my covering, my banner. Jehovah Saboeth. 
not Sabbath, Shabboeth. Now that's the Englishized word Jehovah. <coughs> Did you ever stop and think that if healing passed away, God would have had to have changed his name. His name is healing. His name is not God. His name is Yahweh. His name, Yadhevave, the name that is so powerful that you dare not say it. That's the reason the Jews came to a place where they wouldn't pronounce it. Think about the kind of respect and honor and awesome power in the name. Just, I'm just not going to say it. Well, that, in, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, I believe that was a mistake. Oh, his name, his name, his name is so awesome. His name is, is, is so powerful that beings in the spirit realm shudder at the name because they know, they know that just the name itself has the power and ability to just Blast them into oblivion and they'll never exist again. <clears throat> that name. The awesomeness of God. You remember when Moses is standing there just talking to God in a cloud. Well, you know, you'd get tired of talking to a cloud. <laughs> And he said, I want to see your glory. He just blurted it out. I want to see your glory. <laughs> I can, uh, well, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I can kind of understand that. <laughs> what, do you remember what God said to him? He, just, he essentially said, now, boy, you can't look at me. You understand? <laughs> you can't look at me and live. And you're sure not going to look at my face. But now I'm going to put you up here under this rock to protect you. Think about this. Yeah, right. Do you want, you want me to tell you why God didn't just grab Adam and hug him after he sinned and said, oh, son. He would have burnt him to a crisp. That, 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 that you don't understand what holiness is. We don't have any concept of, of, of what true holiness and purity is. It is so pure. It is so pure that it's pure, 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 pure. That just the slightest contamination and that purity just destroy it. Had he even touched him, it would have killed him. You just touch the Ark of the Covenant. If you weren't called and anointed to carry that covenant, it would kill you. Just his presence. Are you listening to me? Yeah. His name carries all of that glory. And we can get in that name and be robed with it. And he told Moses, he said, now get up in there. He said, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let you look. Just, it, 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 just kind of the residue here. <laughs> you can't, that's all you're going to get, boy. <laughs> I'm going to let my goodness There is no badness in him. I don't care how cold it gets outside. There is still some heat present. 
You can't stand absolute cold. I've forgotten what it is. That, I, I, don't, I don't remember the number now, but it, I, I, don't, I don't know, it's somewhere around something like 400 degrees below zero or some, some ridiculous number like that. Absolute cold. Do you know what absolute good could possibly be? <laughs> well, let me tell you, Satan is absolute bad. But absolute bad can't hold a light to absolute good. Oh, my, 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 my. Philippians chapter two. I'm going to get, I'm going to get back on track here. Amen. If you'll help me and pray with me, believe God with me. And I know you are. Philippians chapter two. Remember now there are three ways. He inherited the name. So if you're going to measure the power that's in his name, then you're going to have to measure the power of God because he inherited God's names in one. You'd have to be able to, and you can't. You cannot measure the power of God. We don't have any concept of ultimate power. Oh man, are you kidding me? <laughs> Our little old peanut brain, we <laughs> we'll go throughout eternity trying to figure it out. <laughs> Amen. And just about the time you think you've seen it all, the Lord will say, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> when Brother Jesse was allowed to go to heaven, he was talking about the angels that fly around the throne saying, holy, holy, holy. And the angel that was escorting him, Jesse asked him about that. And he said, you mean that's all they do all the time is just fly around him? He said, yes, but every time they fly around the father, they see something they'd never seen before. You can fly around him every day throughout eternity and see something different. He said to me one time, you know, you know I just read that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And suddenly the, the spirit of God just arrested me every word, every word. Wait a minute. The born again child of God has the spiritual capacity for every word, every word. And about that time I heard that the spirit, now I've never heard the audible voice of God. So let's just settle that right there. But you hear the voice, the, his voice in your spirit. Amen. And, and he said to me, he said, Kenneth, I could begin speaking today and speak throughout eternity and never say the same word twice. Oh, what a vocabulary. <laughs> Amen. And he said, you have the capacity to hear and understand every one of them. Because he's in here. He's in here. Come on, come on, stretch your spirit. Stretch your spirit. Forget your little old head. Put the stretchers on in there and realize I'm just as big on the inside as God. Oh, because he's in there. <laughs> I'm born after him. I'm his very own son and he's my very own father. Oh man, I've, I've been born of him. Hallelujah. He's my father. He's my father. He's my father. Amen. Oh, glory. Yes. <laughs> Philippians chapter two. <clears throat> 
Verse 5. Let this mind, you have to let it, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Whoa. He said, let that, let this mind be in you. You're not robbing God of his majesty by receiving and knowing that through Jesus, you're equal with him. Hallelujah. You're his child. Well, I tell you what, that'll choke a religious mind. <laughs> oh, no, no, oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. But see, you have to let that mind be in you. In other words, you have to meditate on these things. You have to meditate on, uh, on the fact that I am actually in reality born again. I am a new creature and old things have passed away and all things have become new and all things are of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. Oh, hallelujah. Well, then he goes on to say, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made of himself no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. And given him a name. That is not correct. Just draw a little circle around the word A. And has given him his name. See, we found, we already found that he inherited a more excellent name than the angels. So he's highly exalted him and given him his name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Notice the word things is in italics. That means it was added by the translators. Every knee should bow. You could read it like this. Every knee should bow in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. It has been translated, one translated, beings. That's good. It still means the same thing. Beings in heaven, beings in the earth, beings on the earth, under the earth. And we're talking about names and we found out already from the book of Ephesians that name is above every name that's named in heaven and earth, right? So look at it like this. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Names in heaven, names in earth, and names under the earth. Every living being in heaven, in earth, and under the earth, either now or later, will bow their knee and confess that he's Lord. Well, I'd rather do it now because I love him. Hallelujah. And confess that he is Lord. No man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. And I saw that back there when I was a student at Old Roberts University. And I started writing it on everything. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I just wrote it. I wrote it. I wrote it on. I wrote it. 
uh, on, um, in, inside my school books. I, I, I wrote it all over every place. I just got so excited about it. Amen. And I'm still saying it. And I'm going to keep on saying it. I'm going to leave this earth saying, Jesus is Lord. Bye, y'all. <laughs> I'll tell you sometime how I'm going to go because I've already seen it, but I don't have time tonight. Now notice here, God highly exalted him. So his name, he inherited it. It was conferred upon him right here. That name was conferred upon him. And God called him God. We see it right there in the first chapter of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Let all the angels of God worship him. Now, the third way that he received the greatness of his name was in awesome combat, in conquest. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2. And I realize I've held you a little bit long, but this, this ain't no place to stop right here. 15th verse, Colossians 2. Well, let, let's back up here. <laughs> oh man, it makes you want to read the whole. <laughs> Verse nine, in him, in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and, and power. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened or made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, trespasses and blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances or the notes that was against us, which was contrary to us and to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2. This happened in hell itself. I talked to you a minute, a, 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 a few moments ago there about it. And that's the reason I said I, I kind of jumped to traces there and wanted to get over into this. Second chapter of the book of Hebrews. Now this is talking about that same time. Well, let's begin reading. Verse nine, we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all one, for which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Oh, listen. Whew. Did you get that? Yeah. Mm. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy
destroy him that had the power of death. He doesn't have it anymore. <clears throat> that word destroy is the same word paralyze. Amen. He has brought him to zero, brought him to naught. Glory to God. Listen now, listen very carefully. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Thank God he destroyed Satan. He took the power of death away from him. He doesn't have it anymore. He can't just go kill him. He has to be permitted. Now, the only reason anybody is sick, no sickness comes from God. The only reason anybody is sick, the only reason that sickness can get into your or my body is through consent. Now, it's consent of ignorance. Sometimes it's not. But in most cases it is. Nevertheless, it, it is consent because he can't do it without he's allowed to get in there. And the more we find out about our authority over him, the more we can shut the gate on him and shut him down by the blood and by the power and by the name. Glory to God. Amen. So that in the courts of heaven, he has no case. The accuser can't accuse you anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you waking up to what I'm saying here to you? All he has left is the threat. Yeah. He can't just come in and kill you. Boy, right. that night, years ago, when uh, little Lindsay, she wasn't but, what, 11 years old, I believe? woke up Christmas morning, what turned out to be an Assyrian meningitis. And I won't go through the, the whole story because of the, because of the lateness of the hour. But they gave Kelly the, the news that they, 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 really didn't, they really did not expect Lindsay to, to live to see daylight. And Kelly told me, she said, Daddy, that thing came down over me like a black shroud. Just fear, just, just so dark. But instead of yielding to the fear, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. We've not received the spirit of, gear, of fear again unto bondage, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. My Father loves me and perfected love casteth out fear. Kelly turned and walked over to Terry, her sister. And Terry, Terry said she had fire in her eyes. She walked over there and said, I refuse to fear. And Kelly said, Daddy, it was amazing how weak that thing was. She said, it just, 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 just flew away. Am I getting this right? Just, 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 just flew away. But see, if you yield to that fear, say, oh, my baby, my baby, Lindsay to die. She to die. She could have died talking in tongues, but died. I don't understand that. I know it. That's the reason you're such an easy mark for the devil. You play with fear. Well, I just can't help it. Well, now either you or the Bible is wrong. <laughs> not the Bible. He that feareth is not 
made perfect in love are not developed in love, the scripture says, 1 John 4, 16, 15, 16, 17. Perfected love cast up out fear. And the moment Kelly said that, whew, it was gone. Well, we had to travel halfway across the country to get there that night, and we didn't get in until late. And on the way, uh, I didn't, of course, I didn't, I didn't even get in that cockpit that night. I didn't want in that cockpit. I'm sitting there listening to see what I'm supposed to do and what, what we're supposed to do when we got there. And the Lord told me exactly what to say and exactly what to do. I walked in there. I'm standing, boy, they had us in, the, you know, the, those hazmat suits in that, boy, isolation ward. And uh, uh, other, uh, other, there was an epidemic of it. And there, uh, there were other children in that, you know, several of them had already died. And it, it, was, it, was, it was bad. And the Lord told me what to do. He said, you put your index finger on her breast bone right here. And you say, Lindsay, I speak to the anointing that is within you to rise up and put this disease out of your body in the name of Jesus. So I did that. I didn't add anything to it, take anything away. I just did that. Now she hadn't said anything up to that time. She had, was delirious that morning. She was out of her mind. She, and, and, but the moment I said that, the moment I said it, her eyes popped open. She gritted her teeth. She said, and shouted it. Just shouted it out loud right there in the middle of the night. I mean, it was about 1130 at night in that, in that isolation war there. She shouted it, Papa! I'm healed in the name of Jesus. She was perfectly healed. Perfectly healed. Isn't that wonderful? The name. The name. Authority. The name. That name was one in combat, in hell itself. And Jesus rose up out of there and we read what he said. I was dead, but I'm alive. And I've got his keys. I have his keys. <laughs> you know what key is? Authority. Glory to God. The janitor can have a key to the bank, but he doesn't have the keys to the bank. There's a whole bunch of stuff that he can't get in, but the president of the bank has got all the keys of the bank. Ha, ha, ha. And Jesus has all the keys of heaven and earth hallelujah. and hell. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> hey, and he's given the keys to us. Hallelujah. He's given the keys to us. I've got the keys. I have the keys. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. treasure house of wisdom. Hallelujah. Jesus has made unto us wisdom. Hallelujah. Sanctification and redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. 
I heard the testimony years ago of a situation that happened in Indonesia. A man had died, had been dead a couple of days. And, and the people in, in his church just gathered up around that dead body and they just began to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they stood right there and they said, Jesus, till he got up. Hallelujah. I was in Jamaica many years ago. A young girl died. I thought she was about 12 years old when I got there, but come to find out she was a teenager, but she'd had a rheumatic heart all of her, all of her life, born that way. And so consequently, she was small. And her, and her folks told her all the time, they said, no, nah, baby, now be careful. You could just die in a minute. You're about to die. You're going to die. You could just die in a minute. You just die in a minute. Well, they didn't know any better. Well, they said, Brother Copeland, we have been fasting one day a week for over a year that somebody would come teach us faith. And, we, and you're here. So, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching night and day and, and right in the middle of the evening service, the, the pastor's home was up the side of this hill, quite a steep hill. And the little, the little church building was right at the bottom of the hill. And, and, and this, this was way up, way, way up in the mountain. No electricity there or anything. And uh, right just as the service finished, I just walked out the front door of the little church, walking up the little path there, going up the place. I, I wasn't staying up in that home. I was staying in the grandfather's place, which was just a little ways away. Oh, I heard this woman scream, my baby's dead, my baby's dead, my baby's dead. Well, I, there was... No, oh, that was steep. I don't know. I don't know how many steps up that. Very steep. It was very high. And uh, I turned and started up there. I put my foot on the first step and my second step was on the front porch. I have, I have no recollection. I, there's, there's, there's no stairway in, in, my, in my memory, but I can see that just like it was yesterday. I, I would guess there's at least, what, Lord, 50, 60 steps up there and steep. And I, I just turned and took two steps and I'm on the top step. Well, her dad was standing there with her. He had her under their arms and he's in shock. And he had picked her up out of her, her she was at the, at the table studying and he had picked her up like this and she was hanging on his arms forward well, see, this, the, I, we don't know when this happened because the, after church, they went up there and found her. So when I took hold of her hand, she, she was already cold. And um, I said, in the name of Jesus, live. I said, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to come into you. Live. And oh, it came on me. 
Oh man, I wish I could get that all the time. <laughs> and, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to live. Amen. And stuck my hand in her tummy. She went like this. And she turned around and said, Papa. <laughs> Hallelujah. The name. That name. That name. <sighs> Catch hands with one another. Say this boldly. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. I believe, I believe with all my heart, with all my heart Jesus, has been the Jesus has been raised from the dead. I believe, I believe that, Jesus is alive that Jesus is alive and lives in me right now. Right now. I'm, a I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I now know. I now understand more about the victory in that name. The battle was Jesus. The victory is mine. I have his name. I'm born of his name. He lives in me. His spirit is alive in me. And I believe in that name. I cherish that name. Satan, hear me. All of hell, hear me. Take your hands off my life. Of my family. Take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my church. Take your hands off my church. Take your hands off of my affairs. Take your hands off my affairs. All my ministry affairs. All my ministry affairs. All my business affairs. All my social affairs. All my social affairs. And take your hands off of my president. Off of my vice president. Off of every member of this Congress. Get out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I receive my healing. I receive my financial breakthrough. I receive everything that's missing in my life. I receive it returned with interest in Jesus' name. You bring it back, devil. Sevenfold. You bring it back right now. You're the thief. I rejoice. In the victory of that name. I am a new creature. I am in Christ Jesus. I'm robed in his righteousness. What belongs to him belongs to me. What belongs to me belongs to him. And I'm rising up. I'm going to a new place. I'm going higher. kingdom of his righteousness and in the realm of the spirit. Be it done unto me as you have spoken, Lord Jesus. 
your will be done in my life on earth as it is in heaven. I rejoice. I'm victorious. I'm a new creature. I am a believer. Why, who ever heard of a believer that doesn't believe? I have faith in God. I have faith in God. And I say to this mountain, and I say to this mountain be, thou be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. And, and I do not doubt in my heart. I but I believe that those things I say come to pass. I those things I say come to pass. Therefore I have what I say. When I speak them in the name name that's above every name, the the mighty name name of Jesus. Now give him praise. Give him honor. Father, the pre existent, unbegun one, stepped out on the precipice of time and eternity and spoke, and I believe biblically supported, sang everything into creation with divine frequencies that he spoke and sang. And the worlds began to form from those words, those yes. utterances, yes. and those frequencies. Yes and is still being created, as we all know, at the speed of light and beyond, it didn't stop. Every one of those divine frequencies is contained in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. It's the name above all names. Now, now, that, that, that astrophysicist said the other day, I can't quote the number of the planets. It's just astronomical. And do you know, he calls them all by name. You don't think he knows your name? You know what? You're named after him. The name of Jesus. Boy, it's just... One of those same astrophysicists I heard the other day on the internet say, I think we found what people call God. And, 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 uh, and somebody said, well, wh- what is that? And he said, perfect mathematics. Well. He's right. He's right. That's one of the things that's God. You know, the man, he's a Russian. Yep. Now this, this happened. Oh, It, it must, must, I lose track of time like that, but something like 20, 20 years or so ago when I found out about it, it was a very close friend of mine that, that was involved in it. He called this friend of mine and introduced himself. He is so advanced in mathematics, the, there's nobody on earth that can check his work. If they, if he says it, they just say, well, yeah, it must be because he's, he's, Where he's was he when I was in the seventh grade? Yeah. <laughs> he said, I understand that you know Jesus. He said, I do. He said, I've come up to the place where in mathematics, I've come face to face with God. And he said, I've looked at all of the other religions of the world. And he said, none of them hold up 
except Christianity. And he said, if I come see you, will you introduce me to him? Now this man was willing to, to fly all the way from Russia just to meet my, my friend, to meet Jesus. Yes. And it was so simple. <laughs> he, just, he just simply said, Jesus, this is Dr. So-and-so. Dr. So-and-so, this is Jesus. <laughs> and he got born again. <laughs> Now see, this could not have happened in, a, in, a, in another age. We're, we're at that time when, when science is knocking on the door of heaven. And when it gets to that point, that when, it, when it comes up to that, because you, you can't receive God without faith. You can't just receive him in numbers, but the numbers can lead, lead you there. The man that was, that, was, that man, I didn't wish I hadn't, I wish I'd paid more attention to his name. And I, I will get it. He was talking to Pat Robinson and he said that this is what led him to Jesus. Amen. When he was a young man, it was just too perfect. It was just too perfect. He said all of the billions, trillions and all of these stars and all these planets, he said they all ministered to this one. He said, if they weren't all in the exact place that they need to be, this one wouldn't exist. That's right. And life couldn't function here. And Pat said, why, why, do you, why do you think God did that? Oh, well, he said, this, this, this little place where we are now, he said, this is just the beginning. He said, the best part is yet to come. This is the shortest time you'll ever live. And when this one, when this closes, there'll be no more glorified ones. Just those of us that know Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There'll be no more glorified ones. Not after this. But there will be millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people. Natural born people. There'll, there'll be Lots of people born during the millennium. Lots of them. But then Satan's going to be released. They're going to have to be tried. But when that's over, oh, life is going to be good. Hallelujah. But listen to me. You and I and all the rest of them like us are the only ones throughout eternity that will live in the big house, glorified like Jesus, living as glorified beings forever and ever 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 and we'll be there when the new heaven and the new earth are created. We will have a part in creating it. And maybe ever once in a while <laughs> you look up there and see that sailing fire. How you like it, Satan? <laughs> See you in another 500 years, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And this ought to make an evangelist out of everybody in this room. I don't want my kin folks in that lake of fire. That's not going to happen on my watch. Amen. Glory to God.